Joining me now from the very blue St. George's Hall, the one, the only, since one of the greatest number nine, the greatest of fields of Goodison, to be fair, Andy Gray. Just got to ask, first and foremost, the, the, the trophy that got the show on the road, so to speak, the 84 FA Cup. When you, when you come into that side, you've, you've, you've obviously won previous individual honours at Villa, at Wolves, you've won two League Cups. Something that a lot of people argue is missing from this current crop of Ever Evertonians and has been missing for a fair while. How did you integrate that winning mentality into the side? Well, that was, that was pretty easy, actually. Um, we came in, and not just me, Peter Reid was, was probably the other one. I, I met Reedy. Um, I had actually met Reedy when I was at Wolves because Wolves tried to, were going to sign Reedy, but they didn't, and they ended up at Everton. And then I met Peter when I got here and I thought, I found a like-minded character. He was, I, I loved his personality. I loved him to bits. I saw myself in him, he saw himself in me. We were older than the, the kids that were there. Yeah. But the one thing that people like Sharpie and Gary Stephen, Trevor Stephen, Sheedy, Radcliffe, all these people Neville Southall wanted to do was, was, was win things. And it was, it was easy actually, but I do think that we kind of guided them. I don't think we are responsible. They were the, they had the talent. The older they heads. had all the talent. You were the older heads, though. To the yeah, you need you need your you need your older players to be the right kind. And I think Peter and I were, yeah, for the group of guys that we were working with. Certainly, Peter and I couldn't have done it without them. Yeah. That's an absolute certainty. I mean, they had the skill, they had the ability, they had all the talent in the world. And Howard was giving them guidance, perfectly on the training ground. They were just finding it difficult to put it all together on the on a Saturday or a Wednesday night. We finally got it all together and it was no surprise to me that they went and did what they did this team. It was just too good. I was speaking earlier to Graham about, obviously you share similarities in being that your Scottish lads come yeah. up to Liverpool. How did you find integrating into the city? Because obviously um, something that I found very informative about the film, which I'm sure you'll see is, I was born in 98, I didn't really get to experience yeah. any of the climate, but the, the social political climate of Liverpool at the time Unemployment was high, you know, times were rough. The football provided a real out for the people of Liverpool. Yeah. So would you say that added to your connection with the supporters? I've often said, when I, get, when I got to Liverpool, I'm from Glasgow. Glasgow's, I got to Liverpool and I came in, I, I, I mingled in the city and I thought, do you know what, it is so like Glasgow. And I meant that, built on a massive river, the Mersey and the Clyde. You know, shipbuilding and everything that came in from there was paramount to their history. It was a massive part of their history. A city with two big clubs, Rangers Celtic, Liverpool, Everton. Humour of both cities, Glasgow and Liverpool. I came into the city and I felt at home. Mm -hmm. I really did. I said to loads of people, this reminds me so much of Glasgow with a different accent. And that was what I, that's what I felt like. And that's, that's why I felt really at home in this city. Fair enough. And goes without saying you were goal scorer of arguably some of the biggest goals in this, in this club's history just you know Bayern Munich yeah. the final itself obviously <coughs> you and Sharp both scored in the, the Watford final too just walk me through those emotions when you score them winning goals for Everton Football Club in Cup Finals it's well it's hard to describe I mean emotion is it's, 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 it's instant you know the, I remember the FA Cup final uh, I was away and gone Funny enough, in the, the European final, the one you mentioned that against Rapid Vienna, I, I don't know why, but I felt more in control of my emotions that day than I did at Wembley, and I don't know why. I, I know at Wembley I'd just gone. Maybe because I'd always dreamed of scoring in an FA Cup final at Wembley when I was a kid in Scotland. But when, I, when we got to the Rapid Vienna, I think because we knew we were going to beat them, and it wasn't a surprise. When I scored that day, I was, I was fairly, if you see my celebration, it's, I'm happy. But it's, it's very much a controlled happiness. Mm -hmm. um, I just thought by then we were a side that knew they were good, knew it would need to take a good side to beat us. And Rapid Vienna were never going to be good enough to beat us. Fair enough. It, it's argued the final was a bit of a non entity, really. The final was the semi final. The final was against that second leg in Bayern Yeah, Munich, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you touched on it earlier in, in how you settled down into the city, you found it very similar to Glasgow. Mm -hmm. In terms of your perception of Everton Football Club before joining, I know, as I said, I've read your book in that you weren't exactly going through the rosiest of times. The club, no. Everton Football Club at the time, weren't really going through the rosiest of times. But in terms of your perception of Everton, 
I was thinking if you compare that to a centre half, a centre midfielder, I think it would be very different for a centre forward. You've got the weight of that number nine yeah. shirt. You've got your Dixies, Tommy Lawtons, fellow Scott Alex Young. Yeah. What Joe was, Royal. What, yeah. Bob was, Lashford. How did you perceive Everton before joining? Exactly like that. I knew as a centre forward, if I was signing for Everton, something was expected of me. Something special was expected of me. Graham Sharp, one of my best mates, he's felt the same. And he and he's carried that number nine when he played for Everton gloriously Graham did after I left it was it was just so good to see a fellow Scott do that yeah. because it's such an important then Duncan came along after him and it just it, it, you know if you're a Scott Scotland and Everton I, I, they seem to have a link in that mm-hmm. certain department Alex Young another Scott yeah. you know these, these were great players that played at the top end of the pitch for Everton and it, when I left and Graham took over and then Duncan came in and did the same and it would be wonderful to think another Scott would come and do the same but I can't see any on the horizon. Not Sorry any. about that, guys. I'd love to give you a name. <laughs> not any I'd love to soon. give you a name, but not anytime soon. No. And you ask Duncan, you ask Graham. They know when you come to Everton, it's a bit like going to Newcastle and you're a number nine. Yeah. It's it's a number. It's a number that needs respecting. I knew that and I respected it. From a from a tactical perspective, I asked Graham before, and I've got to ask you, obviously, and you've said from a spectator perspective. Inchy and Sharp were the, the greatest front two yeah. in English football at the time. Yeah. How did you have to adapt your game to play alongside Graham? I didn't. Um, no. We've talked about that before. No. I think that um, people, are, I remember it vividly. And when, when Inchy got injured, Sheffield Wednesday, I remember it to, right in front of your dugout. And uh, Brian Marwood tackled him and he got that horrific cruciate ligament injury. And from that minute, I knew, because we'd been going so well, there was massive pressure on me and Graham, but more on me because I was going to come in and play and I was a vastly different player to mm-hmm. what Adrian was. I just think that Graham and I, I always said, if you're an intelligent footballer, you can play alongside anybody. It doesn't matter what you like. And Graham and I were, plus the fact we were pals and we liked each other and we spent time with each other. So it wasn't like just turning up on a Saturday and, and getting a strip on and saying, OK, you two are playing together. We knew each other and we talked about it. And we never ran down the same channel. We never went for the same ball, very rarely. We never played the same way when we played together. We mixed it up and we were able to do that. And and I think that's because we're both fairly intelligent footballers and it worked. And I was it was one of the most satisfying things of my football career that, that at that time we could take it on because I knew there was pressure on us. We could take it on and complete what Inchi had started. Of course. Um, You've got to mention him, you know, this whole day, this whole evening is about him. A few yeah. words on the gaffer, how was that relationship? Tremendous, like every other player who played under Howard Kendall. Uh, I, 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 I don't think you would find anyone, uh, and that's not just because he's not here anymore. I don't think you'd find anyone who played with Howard, whether they got picked or not got picked, that could, would say they didn't like him or they didn't respect him. I did both. I both liked him and I both respected him. And I think every player would say the same. I'm, I'm sad that he's not here tonight. I really am sad that he's not here tonight. And it's a fitting tribute because Howard Kendall has never been held up with the regard of other English managers, in my opinion. Um, managers like Bobby Robson, Terry Venables, Brian Clough always get talked about in glorious terms. And very rarely do you hear the name of Howard Kendall, and we should. We should. And if this film goes in some way to putting that writing not wrong but writing that so that Howard is people go wow what he did was pretty special then all of us who contributed and helped him along the way would be very happy you certainly did and Andy I, I hope you enjoyed the film mate thank I you. certainly did I hope you have a fantastic night thank you thanks for the interview pleasure